Hello everyone and welcome to this discussion on men and boys in dance. My name is Karen Van Olsen and I'm the editor of Dance Australia magazine and this video is brought to you by the National College of Dance in Newcastle, the Australian Ballet School and Block. We all know that boys love to dance but not many boys are taking up dance, especially ballet. How do we encourage more boys to take up ballet as a profession? This is our second video discussion on this subject. And once again, I'm delighted to welcome a distinguished panel of dance experts, Brett Morgan, Jake Burden, and Kevin Jackson. Brett Morgan is a former dancer with the Australian Ballet and Sydney Dance Company, and now artistic director of the National College of Dance in Newcastle. Hello, Brett, welcome. Hi, Karen, hello everyone. Jake Burden teacher and former dancer and also the founder of Ballet Brothers, a support group for boys. Hi, Jake. Hi, Karen. Hi, everybody. Hi. Welcome. And Kevin Jackson, former principal dancer of the Australian Ballet, who is now artistic teacher at the Australian Ballet School. Hi, Kevin. Hello, Karen. Hello, everyone. Hi, welcome. In the last video, our panellists discussed the need for teachers to adapt their classes to be more engaging for boys, even the possibility of creating a special boys-only syllabus or teaching program that caters to their particular energies and interests. But I'm just wondering, in a busy school where you've got a syllabus to cover and exams and concerts and all sorts of activities to squash into the timetable, is it really possible in practice to take out extra time just to deal with who might be the only one boy in a class? Jake, do you have any thoughts on this? Yeah, sure. So it's a little bit of a difficult one, I guess, because, um, I mean, ultimately, I, I personally think it's just down to scheduling. You know, if, if you do have one boy in the class and there's 20 girls, you know, there is that time when the girls probably have the point classes or their variations classes. I just feel that maybe if schools could um, just allocate a little bit of time for the boy at the same time as the girls doing those variation classes, it could help. I know that's difficult in terms of, you know, getting another teacher in or something like that, but I just think it's vital just to ensure that the boys feel, you know, part of the team and actually get that opportunity to, you know, um, learn the correct steps. I mean, it's definitely easier, I guess, um, and I guess Kevin can talk about this more, but um, Australian Ballet School and Queensland Ballet School, you know, having just specific boys' classes and just specific girls' classes. But I think if we're talking about probably the smaller schools, I understand it can be difficult, but I really think it's important. And yet, yeah, for me, I think it's just down to scheduling. It is possible. You've also mentioned previously that there are other little things that teachers can do to help keep boys feel engaged and part of the class. Things like language and maybe some specific steps that are age appropriate. Would you like to go into that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, predominantly the feedback that I've got from a lot of the boys from all the workshops, it's mainly been the language that's been used. And what I mean by that is purely, you know, if, if the teacher says, you know, okay, everyone, like, girls, let's come to the centre. And it's just by even saying the girls come to the centre, you know, the boy, me being me, I would have just stood there in the corner and waited. But a lot of the boys, you know, they're just going to go ahead and just do it. And I think we just have to be mindful, you know, to make them feel included. That's really important because especially even in schools, you know, the bullying aspect, mm -hmm. they get girls for doing ballet. There's all sorts of, you know, slurs that people use. And I think just being mindful and making the boys feel comfortable because at the end of the day, that's what, they, that's what they need. They need to feel comfortable in that environment. And I think if we're just a little bit more mindful as teachers to say, you know, boys, girls, everybody, whoever, it doesn't matter, please come to the centre. You know, it doesn't have to be necessarily gender specific, but I think just a general comment. Mm -hmm. And the workshops you're talking about are your Ballet Brothers workshops. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Brett, now you run a busy school, National College of Dance. How many boys do you have in the school? Uh, roughly from our babies, tiny pots through to the seniors, we have about 20 to 25 boys. So we're very fortunate, yeah. You are. That's, that's excellent. So what would you suggest to help teachers involve their boys in class? Look, I think the best thing you can do, which we've 
sort of just done actually with Jake is that you actually put on a boys only class. Like I think, like I think that's really important. Like we have, like as part of your example, timetabling, you mean? Mm, absolutely. Yeah. You just make time for it. Like we've got, we even if it's just half an hour or an hour, there's a couple of ways we go from like grade two all the way through up to intermediate. Get them all in a room because the best thing boys can do is bond. You know, they, they say to talk at each other, have some fun with the teacher. You make it light. You do whether you want to do jumps, turns. You do it all, adage, if they're really not enjoying the adage and you do it in a humorous way. When they get things wrong, you make them do push-ups. Like you have a really good atmosphere and it really works because suddenly, like my son's doing it, my son's playing soccer and ballet, Riley, he's 12, and you see them in the corridor with the boys below them and they say, oh, good eight, Nate, and they fist pump each other in the corridor and there's a real team bonding sort of thing that happens and it's just for the boys and if you don't have that luxury I think you need to if you have a school that just has one boy I would say please don't be nervous to actually get that boy to a thing like Ballet Brothers or another summer school that has a lot of boys where they can meet each other they'll be friends for life if they really want to do it and they can go through and do competitions and be on the phone constantly with each other you know it's very difficult if a boys isolate um kevin you, um we mentioned before i mean you're in the enviable position of, of having classes of hand-picked boys at the australian ballet school but do you find that they still need support to help them keep on with their dancing despite being in with their peers at that level if they've found their way to the Australian Ballet School, most of them are really dedicated and find that they are uh, looking towards having a career in dance and, and especially uh, in classical ballet or contemporary. So it's, not, it's more about keeping them engaged and finding a way to keep them consistently driving forward uh, uh, with their technique, with their artistry, and keep them enlightened through their journey. And that's, a, as a teacher, I think that's, and a mentor, that's where we come into it. We have to keep lighting their fire as we go on. Mm. Mm. Okay, so we've discussed what to do once the boys are in class, but how do we even get them into the classroom? How do we get them over that threshold into a ballet class? I think initially, I mean, we've talked about it a lot. Everyone talks about this stigma, unfortunately, that people still think you wear a tutu if you do, and you're a ballerina if you do ballet. And I think really once and for all to try and sort of get over this hurdle, um, I think just to get them in the door, it's important that boys understand, for example, if they're playing soccer and if they're playing um, football, um, how important and how wonderful ballet can be as an adjunct to what you're doing. So my son plays soccer, right? And, and his, his coach immediately just says to the rest of his teammates, wow, you see him go for that header and all of that. That's because he does all those jumps in the ballet. Right. Uh, and... Um, right. And, you know, in my time when I was crossing over playing rugby league, I used to work with the Balmain Tigers um, fitness coach on getting the NRL boys to do stepping and all that sort of stuff. I mean, people just need to be educated as they are slowly. That mm. ballet is sort of a bit of a base for movement. I mean, in the papers recently, there's this world champion boxer that was sort of saying he does ballet bar every day. Um, Jake, I know that you at one point we're trying to encourage boys to move from a hip hop class to a ballet class. You had a, had a cunning scheme there, shall we say? Yes. Um, how did that go? Yeah, look, it, it was good actually. I yeah. mean, um, again, talking about the stigma, the moment you say ballet, all the boys and parents step back from it. And uh, Brett and I spoke about it a few years ago and I just said, look, let's do a hip hop class. But then maybe the last 15, 20 minutes, we open it up to, random things so it started off with probably only about five boys let's say that joined and then through the time I think it grew I mean pre-pandemic I think in the hip-hop class alone we had 20 boys and what I did in the last 15-20 minutes was talk about ballet did little ballet steps um, and then that gradually got them interested in taking the ballet class straight after 
So I think, yeah, we, we did um, a few exercises, running, jumping, push-ups, hip hop dance. And in the last little bit, we started to talk about um, terminology. So we started to, you know, talk about all the ballet terms and what they meant. And then they were going home to their parents saying, oh, mom, I can speak French. Listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. So that was really cool for them. Mm. And then I think that that kind of persuaded the parents actually as well to go, okay, the ballet class isn't a bad thing as well. Let's do that. And then, yeah, I've like before the pandemic, we had probably another 20 boys, young boys in that class. And then from that, actually, what's gradually happened is they found it so much more interesting and then they've wanted to go into the grades into the rad grades so what we found is a slow progression over the years but actually it's been so beneficial for the school for national college really to have all these boys from all the babies all the way up to the full timers so it, it's definitely worked for sure mm. kevin did you have any ideas i think just keeping if we can in Australia in some way keep education happening around young people about art in general but specifically dance and then uh, ballet as well and really start creating a culture where people want to come to the theatre and watch live theatre and and then that will ideally create young boys wanting to take up the career and see it as a, a valid option to do so. I know there's a lot of education um, programs going on with different places around the Australian Ballet and the Australian Ballet School have their own things going on and, and they're all doing really good. But we just need to keep pushing the Australian culture to change. We're so sports orientated. I think it has developed even in my lifetime compared to what it used to be and I think we just need to keep pushing as as the people now at the forefront of that and continue the education of our country and yeah exciting the nation with dance. Yeah, I agree with Kevin completely like what we I mean it's not that hard to do like the Benelong um, I reckon that probably they're still doing it. They have a wonderful program when they invite schools to been along um, at the Opera House where they, you do sort of the Australian ballet. I, I don't know if they still do it, Kevin, but they certainly used to have a day where schools would come um, all over New South Wales and just sort of watch the company in action. And it was a special schools program. And I think it's sort of like a normal school, whether it be in Sydney or even regionally, there's nothing, if you've got an end of year concert, it's great to actually just go into that school, whether it be a primary school or a high school, and actually do like a little preview of your performance. Just take a lunchtime, you know, Jake and I put a floor down at the junction, which is just down the road, um, uh, or any, anywhere in Newcastle, just down the road, 15 minutes. So you, you sort of, you put a floor down and you go and do a little preview performance during the lunchtime of the kids. and. And that really, it might only be one kid, right? I was talking about this to, to Iota last night, sort of talking about his flamboyant career. How can it, where did it start? He started in Pinjara in Western Australia, a real country boy on his own and legs on the wall came in. They did this performance and it blew his mind. Mm. You, can't rely, you can't rely on the parents because without being disrespectful, there's a very small percentage of the parents in Australia that have anything to do with ballet at all. Is it best to take dance to the schools or take the schools to the theatre? What do you think, Kevin? Well, I think both mm. are very valid. But I think that the theatre experience is something that, you know, is, is what really grabs people. And I know it certainly did for me that was the the whole reason I started dancing was because I saw and it was only a down a dance school concert and I sat in the auditorium and just that energy of the theater and I was that was it for me I was captivated and I was taken by by theater but then it's also I think in what we're talking about changing the culture it's about getting and we're talking about boys specifically here, males. It's about showing them that it's 
it's not hard to doubt that to, to dance and and to, to break down that wall and to just have a go also kevin what about when today's little boy goes to the theater goes to see a ballet it might be nutcracker or something like that do you think that there are enough role models on stage as in parts roles in traditional ballets that would inspire today's young boy well i i certainly feel that within my career i i danced a few roles that were he in the character was the lead character in the ballet uh, and not just the prince behind aurora or albrecht behind giselle so I, I do think that that is changing, and I, and I believe that choreographers these days are focusing more on the male dancer as the, if not equal, uh, more focused on role, especially in contemporary dance, and then in, um, you know, Lucas, Jovi, Spartacus, and, and there's other great, Nijinsky, for example, mm. and um, Nureyev over in Bolshoi, you know, that um, wow. these are male roles, that are inspiring young gentlemen to dance. Mm. So yes, I think there are, and I think there's scope for more. And I, I do hope that choreographers keep pushing themselves to highlight men so we can inspire young boys to dance. Mm. Mm. And that it's not seen as, you know, little girls in tutus running around with fairy wands. Yeah.